Do you love chocolate, cherries, and whipped cream all wrapped up in one delicious package? This Black Forest cake is definitely for you. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. This Black Forest cake will be ready before you know it, so let's get started. First off, let's prep our cake pans. I'm using three six inch cake pans, but you could definitely use two eight inch cake pans. It makes a lot of batter, so this will be full and really high. This will be a nice fluffy layer as well. I like to just butter and flour my cake pans, but you could use cake spray. And if you're really just having the worst luck with things sticking when you dismount the cake or invert it onto that wire rack, you could use a parchment paper round as well. That's like a foolproof method. If you're not used to buttering cake pans, it's really good to do with colder butter. So you don't wanna to add too much, just enough for a really thin layer of flour to adhere. I'm using a tablespoon of flour to coat my pans, but if that bothers you because you want a totally dark surface for those chocolate cake layers, which will be hidden underneath frosting, then you can use cocoa powder as well. It's also an option. So just kick that flour around and then tap it into the next dish and repeat. Any excess flour can be dumped right into your large bowl. Now for the dry ingredients. Into a large bowl that's over a scale but under a sifter, I'm gonna add 240 grams or two cups of all-purpose flour. 240 grams exactly, I love precision. Okay, now we're gonna add in one half of a cup of cocoa powder. Use a nice cocoa powder if you can. This is the flavor in your cake. It is the main thing you're gonna be tasting. I'm adding in three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. It's gonna amplify that chocolate flavor and you're gonna be helping you taste the cake a bit more. For leavening, we have half a teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of baking soda. We have buttermilk in this cake, so the soda will react with the acid in the buttermilk and you will have a nice fluffy cake. Sift it out, that chocolate, so good. All these chocolate lumps, they're not so good. Move those through. Okay, we're done with our scale. Give this a nice little whisk. Set it aside, get your stand mixer out or your electric hand mixer and we're on to the next step. So for this cake, I'm using two eggs and two yolks. Best practice, just crack them into a bowl ahead of time so you don't have any shells or broken dreams to worry about. And then the two egg yolks for extra richness. The whites you could save for a meringue or whatever else you want. You can make an extra healthy omelet. So now we're gonna add one cup or 226 grams of unsalted butter into your stand mixer. Fitted with the paddle attachment. Cream it up for just a minute to get it started. And now I'm adding in 300 grams or one and a half cups of regular granulated sugar. It's kind of a lot, but keep in mind, this cake doesn't have a buttercream frosting. It has a whipped cream frosting, which is lightly sweetened. So the sweetness for the cake is actually in the cake this time. You're gonna mix this up until it's light and fluffy. So just give it a really good mix. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Now we're adding the two eggs and yolks. While the mixer is running on a medium speed, add them in one at a time. If they all fall in, it'll still work, don't worry. And our last one. All right, we're gonna amp up the chocolate flavor for this cake with a tablespoon of freshly brewed coffee. Okay, mix it in. We're gonna give that bowl one last scrape down before we add in our dry ingredients. So this cake is gonna use one cup of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk on hand or can't get it, just go ahead and add in one cup of milk soured with a tablespoon of vinegar. We're gonna add our dry mixture in three batches for this cake, alternating with the buttermilk, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, and that's while we're mixing on like lowish. <laughs> Low. Little buttermilk, even lower. <laughs> now I'm just gonna add in the remaining dry mixture. Mix it on low. Once your batter is almost completely mixed, go ahead and take the paddle attachment out and just finish it off by hand. You're going to fold in any of that unmixed nonsense at the bottom and this is our batter, that's the consistency of it. It's a little thicker and that's what we want. We're gonna distribute this batter evenly between our three pans or two if you're making eight inch cake layers. And if you wanna be persnickety like I am, you're gonna use a scale to make sure they're all totally equal. Literally no idea <laughs> if this is anywhere close to equal. The cake pan that I thought had the least batter had the most. 
These are my ancient cake strips. You can make your own. There's basically fabric insulating strips that you soak in water, wring them out before they go onto the outside of the cake, and it'll give you like a nice even bake. I have a whole video on it. If you wanna check it out, click over here. Into the oven, 350 for 25 to 30 minutes or until the center is nice and springy, skewer would come out clean, et cetera, et cetera. In you go. Okay, while that cake is baking, we're gonna make our syrup. This is an integral part of your Black Forest cake because so far it's just a chocolate cake. Hello, what's going on here? Uh, we need that cherry flavor. And I'm gonna give you two options. First of all, let's talk about the syrup. Just equal parts, sugar and water for the flavor. If you're doing it the classic way, it's with Kirsch, which is a cherry brandy. It is really good. If you can't find it, here's what I suggest. You want that cherry flavor still, so go ahead and add in like half a cup of cherries. Just have them, pit them, pop them in there, bring them to a boil, and then muddle them. You're making like a syrupy reduction. It's gonna be amazing, trust me. This is gonna go on to like medium high heat, just stir it around a little bit, like I just wanna dissolve the sugar, and then bring it to a boil. You can let it boil for like a minute and then turn it off heat. It doesn't have to be ice cold when we pour it onto the cake, but you do not want it this hot. If you want this to be like really tasting the Kirsch, you would just bring your simple syrup to a boil and then add the Kirsch in afterwards to retain all that alcohol. But either way is gonna work. This way is gonna be more kid friendly, by the by. This goes into the fridge now and we'll be back with our cake layers. Half an hour later, my cake layers are out of the oven and I wanna show you, I get so many questions about how to know when a cake layer is done, here's the deal. You wanna see the edge is pulling away from the pan and the center is like nice and springy. You can get a knife or a skewer, it'll come out clean from the center. And if you have any other doubts, here's what I always do, just for good luck. Tap, 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 tap. You're gonna give it like a really good tap on either side and kind of bounce it around and it'll help dislodge the cake a bit, just like that, like a Zumba class. Let's go. Look at that, I'm very pleased. Okay, do the same thing for the other ones. And, oh my gosh, I love these layers. Look at these perfect flat cake layers. Do you see that? Flat cake layers, that is stunning and so easy to stack cakes now. And that syrup is delicious. I would eat this for breakfast. And just spoon it on. The cake will absorb the syrup. And you might think, hmm, John, that's a lot of syrup for those cake layers. And I would say, that's right. Keep on trucking. Don't stop. You want the cake to like absorb all of the syrup and it's just gonna be like cuckoo bananas delicious. It is exactly what you want. Set this aside, we'll be back in a minute. My cake layers are almost cool. So let's get to all the prep work for the assembly, starting with the ganache. You're gonna wanna have about a quarter cup or so, maybe a third of a cup of bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate for our delicious ganache that's gonna go on top. To that bowl, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of cream. And we're just gonna microwave this in like 20 second bursts. You want the ganache to be pourable, but not hot. Remember that whipped cream is delicate. Treat it nicely. Once the ganache is out of the microwave, give it a stir and then set aside. And now for the shaved chocolate. You wanna have nice like little shards of chocolate, not a bunch of crumbles. So if this chocolate is a bit crumbly or just not up to snuff, use a hairdryer or a heat gun if you have one and just warm it up. That's all it needs. Now use your knife and look at that. Beautiful, nice crumbles, that's perfect. I ended up using about four ounces of chocolate, but it's totally up to you. You could use eight ounces and cover more of the cake. It's kind of like how much chocolate do you want? What effect do you want? This gets set aside for the assembly. And I will tell you that the assembly is much easier if you have like ice cold dead zombie hands because you're not gonna melt the chocolate. We're gonna want about two cups of halved cherries. And let me tell you, these cherries serve two purposes. One, delicious flavor. Two, structural integrity of the cake. If you're wondering how will a whipped cream cake support three layers, the answer is it will not. It will collapse, all the whipped cream will go at the sides and you're gonna be not happy. But if you have big chunks of cherries in the middle, they will hold the cake up 
and there will be frosting between the gaps. So these cherries will keep your cake propped up. Very important. Here's my first cake that was not exactly a Black Forest cake. It was a chocolate cherry cake without the Kirsch that I did for Preppy Kitchen's blog years ago. Years ago, it was a total, total and utter fail. It just exploded for a couple of different reasons, one of which was the lack of cherries in between each layer. So I'm making one pile for the cherries, one pile for the pits, but I'll do all the pits at the very end. So just have the cherry, twist it up, you have a good piece, and you have the problem piece that you're going to pry out later. And I should say that for the decoration, you're going to want to reserve a certain number of cherries that are the prettiest for the very top. So depending on if you have an eight inch or a six inch cake, you'll have a different number of reserved cherries. You're going to want to use fresh cherries. If you use frozen ones, when they thaw out, they'll just, they won't be firm enough. So you want them to be like really firm cherries because remember, they're holding your cake up in the middle. <laughs> to get those pits out, I think the easiest way is just to use a small spoon. You could use a teaspoon and just pry the pit out. Then you'll have nice, wonderful halved cherries. I have just about two cups now, so I'm ready to make my delicious Kirsch whipped cream frosting. Okay, I am so excited to make a whipped cream frosting. It's like my dream frosting. If you watch this channel, you know I will eat this by the bucket full. No regrets. <laughs> Anyways, one and a half pints of heavy whipping cream, cold, into your cold bowl if you can. I had like just enough room in my fridge to chill this, so it's like the biggest batch of whipped cream I ever make, but it's what you need. All right, one third of a cup of powdered sugar. In you go. And now, this is like, again, the integral flavor for a Black Forest cake. One and a half tablespoons of Kirsch. Oh my gosh, I had just enough left over <laughs> to make this recipe, that's amazing. If you don't want to use the Kirsch, go ahead and use like a tablespoon and a half of vanilla. It'll be a nice flavor as well. Now, whip it up until you have not stiff peaks. You don't want to curdle this into butter, but as like, as soft peaked as possible, okay? Start on low, then move it up to high. This is where it's gonna happen. Let's take a look. Yes, this is nice and stiff, but it could be a little bit stiffer, so I'm just gonna mix it by hand. You're gonna think I'm crazy, but it actually will take it right to where it needs to be. And with your hand, you're not gonna over whip it. That's what you want. It's like as stiff as whipped cream can be before it takes a turn. If you have a cake turntable, let's take that out right now. If you don't, just get your cake stand. We're gonna assemble this delicious cake. Snip the tip off your piping bag. Put your scissors back so you don't lose them later. <laughs> and now we can assemble this up. So pipe the whipped cream on. See, like so easy with a turntable, so easy. And now for the fun part, you're gonna jam this up with all those cherry pieces and I'm actually putting them halfway, like vertical, so that they hold the cake layer up. After your cherries are on top, go ahead and just put a little bit of frosting on top and things will collapse a bit. That's expected, don't worry about that. Okay, pop the next layer on and then repeat that process again. So more whipped cream, more cherries. Add a little bit more whipped cream on top, just to cover the cherries a bit. Now add the final layer on top. Whoa, that is a tall and proud cake. Add that whipped cream on top, just a thin layer. Now we're gonna do some coverage on the side again. Not gobs of whipped cream, just enough to smooth out at the end. You can use an offset spatula or a knife. You just want to tamp this down a bit. This is gonna be completely covered, so like just literally don't worry about it. All I want is a smooth surface to put my chocolate on top of. And now for the side, it's easiest with a bench scraper, but you could use an offset spatula too, or a knife. If you see like, oh my gosh, what is this, like a mummy? Just use a spatula and smooth it out a bit. For now, you just wanna fill in the gaps with your spatula or knife. If it's leaning, you can take a little bit more frosting off or even get your fingers in there and really go to town. If your cake is a wobbling around, this is what you do. My favorite kitchen tool is a skewer. Just place a long skewer through the center after you've adjusted it and then get to smoothing. You can remove it at the very end. 
smooth the cake. Now you have this little crown on top, just use your offset spatula and pull in as you turn slowly. Clean it off in between each swipe. And that's great, like that's a nice edge to work from. Use a paper towel and just clean up the edge. I have a couple dollops for the top. I'm using like a medium to large closed star tip. The last thing I need is my ganache. Now it's totally cool, so that's not acceptable. Give it a couple seconds in the microwave to warm up. You want it to be just pipeable. 10 seconds in the microwave is all it took. At this point, it's really just decorative, so all I wanna do is have like some nice dark contrast in the middle for my, for my dollops and my cherries. Use an offset spatula to smooth it out is have a circle that's close to the edge, but not quite there, because I don't want to see the chocolate on the side, just the top. Now use your ice cold death hands <laughs> to start adding the chocolate to the sides. Just turn it and move it around. So I'm gonna go wash my hands and we'll finish this up. Our very last step is to use that 846 tip and pipe some nice dollops on top. I like to have them nice and close together. All right. Finish it off with your pretty reserved cherries, one on top of each dollop. But this is totally up to you. You can actually decorate the cake however you'd like. <laughs> okay, place that last cherry on top. There you go. And it's ready to serve. You can pop it into the fridge to hang out for a while, but it's best the day of. It'll still be nice the next day too though, don't get me wrong. Do you see the inside cherries and whipped cream and all that delicious thick whipped cream is there because of those structural cherries? Trademark Preppy Kitchen. It's official, I'm having cake for dinner. <laughs> I mean, this is like the size of my head, but I'm into it. So before I take a bite, if you like this recipe, check out my chocolate playlist, all of my favorite chocolate recipes, and boy, do I have a few. All right, but now it's time for a bite. The first of many. Oh, I want all that whipped cream too. Astonishingly good, oh my gosh. The cake melts in your mouth, full of that like Kirsch syrup, the whipped cream, the cherries. Oh, I gotta stop. But anyways, if you like this recipe, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next chocolate video.